So there's a K-pop artist that basically is ripping off Afro beats. <laughs> they are appropriating Afro beats in K-pop land. Let's let me play this and I'll give you my take, right? As someone that loves Korea, loves Korean culture, loves to travel Asia, loves Asia, especially East Asia. I'll give you my take. Mm. Yeah. Baby, like the so apparently he's even saying words in Igbo. <laughs> um, hold on one second. I'll play a sec. Uh. They're even singing Pigeon English. This reminds me of Afro beats from like 20... 2010 around that era that whole, like, yeah this is like old school afro beats it's like 2010 like nato c era 20 2000 maybe like oh one day cole era like maybe like oh eight to like 2012 that's kind of the vibe that is going for I, um man okay and then oh, oh, oh. Yeah, this is like, no sofa. No sofa. You no, know, this is definitely um definitely Afrobeats. Let, let's play this. So recently Make a rub, make a love, make a rub, make a touch of bunny. Happy riding in the city. Make a go, make a go, make a see your body, body. No, they do like bolo. Baby, don't they like a bull. All right, so let me give you my take for someone that, you know, loves Korea. Um, and yes, of course, I've been to Korea K pop. K-pop rap definitely already appropriates hip-hop music. And it's almost like the whole world has taken claim out of hip-hop music. And I think black Americans have really shown us... Black Americans, because of they have the exposure... When you're in America, you have the exposure to other races, other cultures, you know, especially white people. There's a history of, you know, white people in America appropriating like Elvis used to steal people's songs in the, that era they would steal people's songs you have a song you record a song all of a sudden it's on the radio and somebody else is, is recording it or, or someone else is singing it and they don't give you any credit nothing right so there's this level of appropriation or just like literally there's a history of stealing black music right and that history has been toxic and you know these you know they would have sort of like white musicians just sort of like st literally steal their everything about their music and go make all this money so that was one component to it then what we have now is more sort of cultural appropriation so they will strip everything there is around black culture and make money out of it whether it's kim kardashian getting her bbls and kylie jenner getting her lips justin bieber singing hip-hop and r&b um all the Justin Timberlake and then they end up outselling the black people right because they you know they take black culture they make it white and that's the whole concept around cultural appropriation and I'm not villainizing anybody for for their part in it necessarily because it's a system um and I'm not going to blame the artist at the end of the day Justin Bieber is my favorite musician right <laughs> my favorite if not one of he's my favorite and at the end of the day yeah at the end of the day, I don't support sort of that sort of notion of the systemic way that black culture is ripped off. I don't support it. Now, when it comes to Asia, East Asia, it's a very interesting thing. It's a very interesting thing that's going on there, right? Because China has been accused of stealing American intellectual property, right? China has been accused of that and you know everything from like Chanel bags to even just like in tech technology we even have the microchips right now that you know that's a whole other conversation if you want to know about that stuff I have a channel that I dedicate to like sort of like uh, geopolitics uh, OVG politics and then also the University of Making Money and I have like a documentary I did on sort of China US dynamics but China is accused of stealing a lot of US intellectual property but 
a lot of the way that intellectual property works in America is how America has sort of taken intellectual property to, how would I put this, almost steal ideas from around the world and then, you know, and then get a, get a patent. So like, like, whatever. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Afrobeats and, and, and South Korea. I think it's actually a good thing. I think it's actually a good thing. And I'll tell you why. Um, so I go to Asia every year. I have an Asia trip every year. And I think it was like 2019 and I was with my friends in Hong Kong and I played them an Afrobeats song and they were like, what, like, what is this? They, they just, they just didn't want to hear it. I think it was like, I can't remember what song it was, but it was like the first like two seconds. And it was just so different from anything that they had ever heard. You know, in, in, in Hong Kong, they have a very sort of like, I don't even, it's you, if you know Hong Kong music, you know what it is. You know, you know what it is. Chinese music, A East Asian music, not K-pop. That's different. But East Asia, specifically Hong China, right? In China, the kind of music they have is like super white, super whitewashed. And this is not traditional Chinese music. I'm just talking about their popular music right now. Very pop, very whitewashed. So it's it, it's almost, it's so funny to me because when I played Afrobeats for my high, for my, in, in university and in high school, for my friends, they were like, what the hell is this? <laughs> right? They were like, what the hell is this? This is before, obviously, way before Afrobeats, Afrobeats like, blew. But it was always, it was always as good as it is. But they were like, what the hell is this? And look at where it is today. And they can't get enough of it. You know what I mean? So it's like, the thing about Afrobeats is the sound is different. It's unique. Especially if you've not experienced that culture. But the, the, what it does to your spirit, when you consume it, there's no music like it. There's no music that transforms you in that way. Especially when you experience Afrobeats in Africa. When you go to Nigeria, go to Nigeria in Dirty December and experience Afrobeats. There's no way. <laughs> like, it's the, you feel the spirit. And there's no way. When you, when you get that sort of like... It's almost like, I don't even want to call it an infection, but when you get that infection, like there's no going back. And so for me, the, the, because I was so used to it at that point, when I played it in 2019, when I played it for my Chinese friend in, in Hong Kong, and she was like, what? like, they were like, what the hell is that? What? You know? And these are people that I knew as when we were super young and they, there was Afrobeats then. I don't even know if I had ever played it for them back then, but I played it this time and they were like, what? What? No, <laughs> but what it tells me is that Afrobeats is going global. It is global. Sorry, let me correct that. It is global. We had a calm down play at the World Cup and everybody was going crazy for, over it. It's already global, but to enter that East Asian market, I don't think people really understand the impact of that. If you can dominate, if Afrobeats enters that 1.4 billion people in China, if we can enter China in that way, you don't understand the kind of sales, <laughs> the kind of sales. Now this guy, he, his song is, his song is okay. Honestly, I wouldn't listen to it because whenever you're dealing with a ripoff, it's never going to be as good as the original thing. Hip hop has been around for so long that like at this rate, at this rate, people have mastered how to copy hip hop and appropriate it and do a good job with it. When I was in Korea, I listened to a lot of K-pop that was hip hop and I loved it. Some dope, dope, really dope songs. But when it comes to this, right? Afrobeats is still so fresh and still so new. With this song, I know what he was trying to do, but he didn't achieve it. And yes, you could say, okay, he's also trying to tap into the Korean market and, and let them enjoy the music. But to me, it's so much bigger than that. Let me play some more. He just didn't deliver. And so, but if he... Look, he didn't deliver. It's okay. It's whatever, right? But imagine that he's taking those people in, in, in Korea. And Korea, everyone in East Asia is listening to K-pop. I was in Thailand. We, they, had a, they had a DJ from, K, uh, from Korea. Everybody was going wild in the club. Everyone in East Asia they, or Southeast Asia too, they're listening to K-pop, right? K-pop is big in Asia, right? 
And so imagine a K-pop K-pop artist is infusing Afrobeat sounds. He's introducing them that market, which is huge, and which have inc- immense purchasing power. Their purchasing power in Asia is crazy. You go to Thailand, you go to you go to Korea, you'll see these malls, and these malls are all packed with people shopping, and there's so many of them. <laughs> so imagine that, right? And I think we've already been in, in the Middle East. That's fine. We've already been in the Middle East, um, Afrobeats. But that East Asia marketplace. So he's introducing them to that sound. Now, when he introduces them to that sound and they start feeling the palate and the pal- they're, they're adapting to the new palate, all it takes is them to say, whoa, wait a minute, whiz kid. Let me go to the real thing because the real thing is always going to be better. So they're going to go, it's just opening them up to more sounds like this. Because right now, this is the only song on your playlist. I want to hear more songs like this. What is YouTube music going to take you to? A WizKid song next. And all of a sudden, you're diving deep into Afrobeats, increasing the purchasing power and the streams of Afrobeats. So this is only good for Africa. And yes, I understand the whole thing about cultural appropriation, all that stuff. I think... I understand it in America, in the American context when people in America uh, fight for that because Americans, black Americans have been systemically oppressed by the West. But when it comes to Asia, East Asia, we haven't traditionally been systemically oppressed. We've still, we've been in Africa, we've been s- oppressed by the West, not by Asia. Right now, China's doing this, um, these investments. Some people are calling it debt traps. They're not debt traps. But they are, you know, but we already have a great connection with Asia and with China. And right now, the image of Africa in China is very negative. Did you see that BBC documentary of the guy that, like, films these kids? We have a very, very negative image in in China. Um, The the traditional image that the West had of us before, before the whiz kids and all that stuff. So this sort of introduction to Afrobeats into Asia, into East Asia, coupled with our business relationship with China, um, that could open a lot of doors economically. So I actually salute this. I think this is great. I think this is good for Afrobeats. I think it's great. I think more K-pop artists should make Afrobeat songs. I encourage you to do that. And as people play those songs, they will get infected with the real thing and that's just going to open up our world <laughs> to the 1.4 billion people in China and more people <laughs> in East Asia. 50 million people in, in Korea. I don't know how many in, in, in Japan. And then the whole Asian population, East Asian population. Imagine that. And then when they're booking us to perform at shows, <sighs> when you're selling merch, when you're doing all these things, and you can really push that African image as more refined and polished and trust me we we are destined to have a strong relationship with east asians so this is only going to help so i think you know all these people saying a pro cultural appropriation like you have to understand the dynamics in america with america (laughs) yeah i understand i understand that Right, but with China, it's I think it's doing the the opposite. I think it's opening it has the potential, especially if we make sure that we already have the relationships with China governmentally. So we can make sure as we're negotiating these deals, and I don't know if the Nigerian government will have our best interests at heart, but we can make sure when we're negotiating these business deals that we're negotiating deals that open up our entertainment to the Chinese market. We are friends with China. Um, we are friends with, you know, we're friends with China. We're growing, we have growing relationships with other East Asian countries. America is the one that's fighting China, not us. And so we need to include our entertainment and change the image of Africa to the Chinese. So we can do this mutually beneficial partnership that will give us an economic advantage and us exporting our music and our culture to East, to the East, we should celebrate this. So I think a lot of people reacted to this. They were offended. It's not the same thing as when 
you know, white people appropriate black culture in America because in America, again, black people have been systemically oppressed by the whites and Africa too. So if we see this happening, <laughs> you know, with white, a white musician doing it, then you sh there's last cause for alarm. Unless they, but the way they've done it right now, they've been very strategic. They do it in a collaborative sense. You know, when Justin Bieber, he was featured on a WizKid song. When he's collaborating, he's not just going out on his own and doing an Afrobeat song. So it's acceptable because they've learned the mistakes of the past and they're not going to do the same mistakes because they're going to get canceled. But in Asia, it's a different dynamic there. It's different markets. The laws in each country is different. So we can't really control, you know, each country. Just as like how we had pirates, piracy in Nigeria and we, we've been appropriating intellectual property in Nigeria <laughs> from around the world is the same way that they've done it in East Asia. And like I said, at the end of the day, I just think it's a good thing. It's going to open up our, our sound to that market, make it more palatable that, for them and make them discover it more. And when that happens, there's going to be so much more money that floods into the market. And, and to, to seal that deal, we need to put in place some partnerships with the Chinese government, with the Korean governments, with all these governments, as they are doing their investments in Africa, as they're doing their partnerships with us, it's a mutually beneficial deal that we can tap into their large numbers and their markets and their purchasing power. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. You're watching Brand Video Pro. No one, who, who, who is giving you this level of insight? Who, who's, who? Who's giving you this level of entertainment, insight, with a, a hint of geopolitics, with a hint of international business? Who's doing it? Brand Video Pro. So, like, follow, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. A peace. Ken Mo, signing out.